If you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, if your brother has or sister has anything against you, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. I remember, uh, this is not political, but I remember before our present president uh, became the president a long time ago, and uh, there was a, a video, a film, he was talking about the Bible, especially the Beatitude. And uh, he was a senator. He said that it is impossible for us to use the Beatitude of Jesus Christ to apply it for our, uh, you know, uh, for the country's defense, you know. It is, we cannot apply the rule of Jesus, the Beatitude. We cannot be Christian when it comes to the defense of the country. Now, why am I saying this? Is it true? It, it was, uh, for instance, you know, you know, a lot of people hate us. We know around the world, and you, tra you travel, and you see this. Perhaps it is because uh, we do not express ourselves uh, uh, clearly enough, or perhaps uh, we uh, present ourselves in such a way that uh, we are superior. And in, in many ways, and as I live in Europe, around Europe, and I travel around the world, for instance, whenever, whenever I travel to Australia, Australia is still under uh, the protection of uh, the United States of America. After World War II, you know that we still have the, we are the protector of Australia because the Japanese you know, attacked and uh, invaded Australia. So I was there, and everything in America is supposed to be like superior. And whatever we do over here, People imitate uh, in Europe, and you see this, you see this. Uh, the, the sense is this. I have this sense, okay, I live uh, in the community with like 23 nations, priests and brothers and people, and uh, the, the university is 90 nations coming in together and studying. When, whenever they, they, they see me and they realize I'm an American, and they say, oh, you're rich. There's a kind of a resistance and envy, but also a respect. At the same time, uh, if you, you listen in and you just sit down, and I just sit there as, you know, because I don't look American, I look Vietnamese, so they keep talking about Americans, and I get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, mad, <laughs> because they, <laughs> they, get, they don't think that I'm American, until I sit down with all the American priests and, and brothers, I, I speak English, and I say, are you Vietnamese? You speak Vietnamese. They realize that. Oh, respect, but also there's an envy for Americans around the world. Even hate it. But when it comes to technology and solving problems, mm -hmm. always Americans are going to be there. Mm -hmm. And there's a need. But still, there's an envy, there's a rejection. All over you go to the Middle East, you see that. Now, we need to look, take a look at ourselves. Suppose somebody is against us. This, this law of Jesus Christ can only apply on the personal level. How about apply on the national level? You know, the enemy. For instance, the ISIS has a lot of, you know, things against us. And we go over there and we sit down and we talk about, okay, we're reconciled with our brother because they are against us. I, I don't think it makes sense. But Jesus is not talking about something else, something outside. He's talking about something inside us. And how, how, is there war? How, how does war come to be? Well, we, we tend to fix things from the outside instead of the inside. Nip it from the back. Nip it from the beginning. Now, when we look at the teaching of Jesus today, it's all about anger. And he brings it to another level. Now, anger is the beginning of war, of violence, of terrorism. And we try to control violence and terrorism from the outside, or even in the education of our children. I, uh, I mentioned this before. You go to uh, the East LA, you go to high school, and all the, the children, the students enter into the high school, they have to go through that uh, uh, the metal detector, all, the, all the, the ammunition, all the weapons, they have to go through it. And they check for if you bring drug into the school. And we're, we're taking, you know, we're solving problems from the outside. Suppose we teach our children, learn to control their own anger, violence, 
themselves learn to live with their own conscience and get rid of the, the sins, something will change from inside out instead of spending a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of human resources just to, to control. Now Jesus solving the problem by giving us the solution. Look at your anger. And look at the cause of your anger. He, he warned us about this. Now, there are three ways. There are three ways to, uh, to look at the how to solve or how to resolve or handle anger. For us, you and I, when we enter into this church and as human beings, okay, every person, we always are in a constant state of conversa conversation. Constant. Because either we talk to ourselves, ourselves, okay, or we talk to another. Another may be our imaginary friend, or maybe uh, another person, or maybe God, or even to the devil, or to the world, whatever. Other and me, and in, inside here, there's always a constant conversation inside my heart and my mind. Even when we're asleep in dreams, we still talk to, to ourselves. And we imagine those, you know, images of those characters we talk. And since enter into this conversation, and what, make, what makes us angry? You ask yourself. Now, in war, if you study something about, uh, something about the psychology of war, simply it is not about who has more ammunition or artillery or you know, more, uh, a more uh, stronger army. No, it's, the war is always about breaking the will. This is from Eisenhower. As long as you can break the will of the enemy, you know the philosophy of the enemy, you break the will of the king or of the general, you break it. And you break the will among the soldiers in that army, you break the will. Or in the society, you just break the will. Or in the family, you break the will of the family. Or in a person, you break the will of the person. And then you see there will be disorder. And you, you look at it, whenever somebody breaks your will, you get angry. Just like you break your arm, huh? you get hurt. But I'm, I just want to come to church today and be silent, okay? Meditative, private silence. And suddenly you come into a church and people are singing. It breaks your will. <laughs> you get, you know, upset, frustrated. And then, Oh, I, I want to sing and I want to praise and then and suddenly somebody come in and say, be silent. Breaks the will. Now you have two wills, evil will or good will. <coughs> we are good people who have good will. We will the good of others. That's love. And will the good of ourselves and we will the will of God the Father. <coughs> Thy will be done. But what does the devil do? It wants to break the good will. The trust between, uh, between us uh, among us and between you and I and between me and God. That's what the, 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 the devil does. Breaks the will. So there are three ways, three criteria when you get angry. Either you choose the, yourself as the criteria, the rule. Okay, you break my will, I get upset, I get angry, frustrated, and if you insulted. Or if it is not me, then I have to use the law. I use the law. Okay, so you see the Pharisees and the scribes coming at Jesus, and they have the law in their hands. You break the law, you'll be in trouble. And, and we, uh, you, that, that is what happened. They, Jesus made them mad, upset a lot of those people because he breaks the law. He said that any, any letter, okay, part of the letter will be fulfilled even if the heaven, heaven and earth passes away, but not the law of God. I come to fulfill the law. But here, the law of the Pharisees, he came in and he saved people. He healed people during Sabbath. Okay? The law of rest. He came and he made uh, the blind man see or the lame walk. He broke the law. And the Pharisee got angry at him. He just broke the status quo by, be, by doing good, by showing the goodwill, being good. Now, either you use the law as your rule or yourself as your rule or God as your rule. God as your rule. Now, what happened is this. You enter into yourself and you, you take a look. Suppose we just sit still. Sit still for a moment. No reaction and awake. Really awake. Not asleep, awake. And take a look. What is the rule you use? Me as a center 
the law as a center or God as a center. If me as a center, then suddenly you realize that the whole world owes everything to me. Okay? I'm easily agitated. Or the law, I'm going to be very critical against you, whatever you do. And I'm highly hypercritical because you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I get angry, upset. And you know, if you get on traffic on the, you know, on the road and you see somebody breaking, just cut you off, you get angry. Because the law there, and then you yourself. How about returning to the Lord, returning to the Lord, and let's take a look at Jesus. Make him the rule, make him the standard. Look at Jesus. When people come and say to Jesus, you are evil, you are crazy, you are, you know, you are the devil. You use the devil's power to cast out devils. They cursed him. They insulted him. They humiliated him. And he's God the Almighty. Look at how God reacted. Well, many times, people ask him, demand him to tell uh, who he is. He said, I am. And when he said, I am, Yahweh, like yesterday we, we, we learned that word, people got so mad. And they pick up stone. They want to kill him right there, execute him right there, not just on the cross. You know that was, you know, that was one of those many times they wanted to execute him right there. What did he do? He withdrew. He went away. Many times, the first thing you do, as God does, as Jesus did, well, he withdrew. They walked away. You see, people came and holding stones in their hands again, and with the law. In their mind, in their mouth, this woman was caught. We caught her in the act of adultery. According to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. What do you say? What do you have to say? You are good teacher. Well, if he said yes, that he is not merciful. If he says no, that he breaks the law, once again, the stone will be at him, will be thrown at him. There's a challenge. He sat down once again. He withdrew, but he lowered himself down. This is a this is a secret of Jesus of God. How he had no anger. He sat down. He low humble himself to the level of that woman, the the sinner, the adulterous woman. And if they throw the stone at, at the woman, he will take his body and he protect her. He protects the sinner, and he remains silent. That's the way of God. He withdraw. And then he lowered himself and he remained silent. He started writing down, you know, when you write, you think. You think. And you think about why people are angry, the cause and everything else. And it's all about sins. Any one of you who is without sins, please throw the first one. You know, thinking. Just withdraw, lower yourself down and be silent and stop thinking. This involves the death of the evil, the death of this law, the death of our own law, and we enter into the law of God. This is what I do in, uh, uh, in my mother used to t teach me, I call my mother, okay? My mother teach me uh, as I was young, growing up for Vietnamese, okay, our tradition. Before you open your mouth to speak, to say a word, curl your tongue seven times. That's what she does. That's what we do. We curl it. That means you. Before I open my mouth to say any word, and then each of the seven, uh, seven times, there is some, some questions, some examination. <clears throat> if we do that, that I cannot give you the, the doctrine of teaching of this, you know, seven times, curling your tongue seven times, here, it's too long. But suppose we just withdraw, remain still, silent, stop it, and just die, let the ego die down. Like Jesus, submit himself to God, the will of God the Father, and lower himself down. He died to his ego. And you have that empty space, that peace, and you look clearly at the situation. Anger is going to be there, the fire is going to be there, but there's a silence, there's a stillness, 
Yeah, it's gonna go away. But what is important is that peace in my heart and my mind. You see, that peace of Jesus Christ below Himself right here, right now, in the Holy Eucharist. Silence, stillness, everything stops. Right there, you find peace. 